Hi, I'm John Moncrief with Digital Tutors, a Pluralsight company. And in today's lesson, we're going to look at what happens the very first time that you launch Houdini. We're going to take a quick look at some of the display settings you can change. We're going to learn how to pan, zoom, and tumble around, and how to set up some of the basic preferences for getting started. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Now the first thing that you'll see when you launch Houdini for the first time is this splash screen entitled Start Here. Now I definitely think that it's well worth your time to run through the quick start tutorials. All you need to do is click on the quick start little uh, line here and what will happen is a browser window will open for you and you'll be taken to the side effects web page where they actually have these really great little videos here that you can start. Um, it'll probably take 25 to 30 minutes to go through each and every one of them, so they're just a few minutes apiece. And they'll really help you get acclimated with how you need to uh, move around in Houdini and what some of the terminology is. Uh, but we're going to go over some of that right now, too. But I do encourage you to check out these videos for sure. After you've seen those videos, uh, you don't have to have the splash screen pop up every time once you've run through those tutorials. You can click on this little checkbox here that turn this off so you don't see the splash screen each and every time you load the interface. And we'll just click on Clothes. Now, one of the first things that I want to do is look at some of my display settings. And I'm going to just tap D on the keyboard. And that will bring up this dialog box here for the display options. Now, the first thing that I want to do is go to my background color and change it from light over to dark. I do this for a couple of reasons. Mainly when you're working in um, dynamics, if you're working with fluids, or especially if you're working in pyro and you're working with fire and flames and things like that, the black background will help give you a better idea of how it's going to look. Not only that, but for the purposes of this recording, the screen capture usually works a little better with a dark background. The other thing that I'm going to do is come over to the Guides tab, and I want to turn off what's called the Origin Nomen. Now that's just this little red icon here in the middle that tells me exactly where the center of my scene is. I can click that and you can immediately see the change that that icon in the center of the screen here will go off. I still have an idea of what direction I'm facing by looking at the floating omen over here in the corner. Excellent. So with those two things done, I'm just going to click on Save as Default. You'll get this secondary little dialog box that'll tell you something like, um, well, these options have been saved into your preferences file and that new viewports that you create from now on will uh, have this change made to them. So it's now been saved as default. So you're good. You can close out those two dialog boxes. Another thing that you might want to do right when you first start off is turn on autosave. Now, autosave is not turned on by default. Sometimes when you're actually simulating a file or working in simulations, you don't want the autosave feature to kick on while the computer's trying to calculate a frame. So by default, it's actually turned off. We can turn on autosave, but before we do, we want to make sure that we save the file that we're working on somewhere so that Houdini knows how to make the backup file. Which leads us to setting up your first initial project. So before you get going anywhere in the interface with Houdini, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and start a new project. Now, the new project dialog box looks something like this. And you can keep the defaults if you'd like, just keeping it in your home directory. And instead of new project, we'll just call this 3D World. And we'll click Accept. We'll come over to File, and now we want to save our scene. So I'm going to choose Save As. You'll notice that it automatically puts us in our default directory for the project that we just created. And we can just give it a name. And we'll just call this Startup. Now we can come over and turn on Autosave. And with Autosave turned on, it'll automatically keep a backup of our file in case something was to happen while we were working. Like you lose power or, you know, somebody accidentally kicks the power cord out of the back of your computer. There's a couple of other things that'll help you when you're first getting started, too. Each section of the Houdini interface is considered a pane, is what it's called, a P-A-N-E, a pane. So here you have the parameters pane, and that's the information that's in this area. Here you have a network view, and this is what is inc incorporated inside of that network view. Now, these things sort of travel along together, and you can color coordinate these pane tabs so that you know where you're at at all times. And that's available by going into the Preferences area, which is here, under Edit, and then Preferences. And we can just click General User Interface to begin with. 
that'll give you this dialog box. So one of the things that we want to do is color pane headers with network contexts. Okay, we can click accept. And when we do, you'll notice that we now have this little blue tint that goes along here with this pane and this pane and this pane. So we know that all three of the information, uh, all, all of the information in all three of these panes is now linked together. So what we see in the viewport is what we're going to be looking at when we look inside of our network view, which is also what we're going to see when we see the parameters. You can have multiple panes all connected to different viewports too, but that's a little bit more advanced. We can get into that in a later lesson. So for now, with these things done, we're able to actually start work inside of Houdini. First, let's cover some of the really basics that we need to know on how to move around. So the first thing that you need to know is there's several different ways of viewing your scene inside of Houdini. I'm going to come over here to this toolbar on the left, and my interface is a little bit squished because of the recording size, but you'll notice there's a little down arrow right here. I can click on that with my mouse, and it will scroll this toolbar up and down so that I can see the different tools I have available. By default, you have the camera tool selected, which is awesome. That's what allows us to pan around and zoom inside of our scene. In order to tumble the viewport, simply hold down the left mouse button. You'll see the little hand icon looks like it's grabbing the screen there. And then just move your mouse around, right and left, and up and down. In order to zoom in, you can use your middle mouse wheel. Simply scroll forwards and backwards to zoom in and out of your scene. And if you need to pan around, all you need to do is click the mouse wheel or the middle mouse button, and it will allow you to pan around in the scene. With these very, very basics out of the way, it's time that we get started actually trying to break something apart inside of Houdini, which we can do in the very next lesson.